Hello and welcome to Cometa Camera Snapshots. Today, we take a look at the Lumix S1, a full-frame mirrorless digital camera from Panasonic, one of two cameras launched with the company's full-frame system, the other being the super high-resolution S1R. Thankfully, both cameras are virtually identical, apart from the megapixel count and the video capabilities. So, let's check out the less expensive S1, and we'll highlight any differences between the two models at the end of the video. The Lumix S1 is completely new territory for Panasonic. Now, while the company has made excellent strides with its popular portable Micro Four Thirds format G-Series cameras, the new full-frame Lumix S line aims to appeal to serious photographers, including professionals, with build quality and a price tag to match. Now, the new L mount, developed in cooperation with Leica and Sigma, doesn't have an extensive selection yet at least on Panasonic's part. So far, we've seen a 50mm 1.4, 70-200 f4, and the 24-105 f4 lens you see here. All three lenses have been developed with very high quality standards, and the 50mm and 70-200mm lenses are certified by Leica. And speaking of Leica, quite a few existing Leica lenses are compatible with the cameras, and Sigma has already released 11 prime lenses for use with the mount, plus an adapter that converts many Canon EF mount lenses to the new L mount. So while first-party lenses are few and far between so far, there's plenty of glass to choose from already. This 24-105mm to lens, which comes bundled with the S1 if you so desire, offers a lot of versatility with a very useful focal range. Uh, consistent brightness at f4, built-in stabilization, which combines with the camera's stabilization to provide five-axis dual IS. It's dust and splash proof, and even has macro focusing capability with a one to two reproduction ratio. Combine those features with a very solid body and a fast, quiet, linear autofocus motor, and this 24 to 105 is a very good all-around performer. Now, onto the camera itself. The prevailing first impression is that it's big and heavy and very rectangular. It's attractive, obviously well-built and easy enough to hold, but if you're looking for a sweeping curves and perfectly contoured grip, well, ergonomics aren't exactly its forte. Where this camera shines from the jump is its controls, with dedicated, very clearly labeled buttons for a variety of common settings. Mode dial, drive mode, autofocus mode, autofocus area, back button AF, white balance, ISO, exposure comp, plus all the usual navigation buttons, playback and record. And a quick menu button gives you easy access to photo styles and other picture micro adjustments for getting great out of the camera JPEGs, plus drive mode, aspect ratio and flash settings. All of these buttons can be customized, of course, but with the most important settings already mapped, the default setup is pretty nice for most photographers. There are actually two more blank customizable buttons on the front, plus a customizable lever that is set to silent shooting by default. Now for changing settings, you have three dials. You have one on the front, one for your thumb, and one that doubles as a directional pad and you have a little thumbstick for moving focus points or navigating menus. All in all, an excellent array of controls, all laid out in a logical, easily accessible way. And once you have everything set just the way you like it, there's even a lock lever here in the back to make sure your current settings stay put. Continuing our tour around the S1, we have a dual card slot, one XQD and one SD. Now, XQD does offer faster write speeds, and the cards are extremely durable. However, it does add to the system's overall cost. And on the other side, the S1 has a remote port, microphone and headphone jacks, USB-C port, and a full-size HDMI port, which is ideal for external video recording. The camera even comes with a little cable support bracket to help protect both cords and ports during regular use. And on the back, you get a nice, bright, three-way tilting touchscreen. It tilts up, it tilts down, and to the side for shooting vertical photos from low or high angles. 
You can also use it for selecting autofocus points, changing settings, navigating menus, and more. Now you can use it to move an autofocus point while looking through the viewfinder like so, but because the camera's grip is so large, it's difficult for the average thumb to reach while having a finger on the shutter button at the same time. So it's a feature that unfortunately only works with large hands or very long thumbs. And then you have a very high resolution OLED viewfinder. 5.76 million dots to be exact. And it's fast too with 120 FPS refresh rate. Plus it's surrounded by this big cushy eye cup to provide comfort and to keep out bright light. On top, in addition to the controls, you have an LCD status monitor displaying crucial settings. And like most cameras aimed at enthusiasts and professionals, there's a hot shoe, but no built-in flash. The battery chamber on the bottom of the camera houses a pretty large BLJ31 battery, which despite its bulk, actually doesn't provide a ton of shooting time, at least with standardized testing. The S1 is rated at about 400 shots per charge, although in our experience, we passed 400 shots and had about 50% battery life remaining, so your mileage may vary. Thankfully, the battery can be recharged in camera via USB-C, so keeping this relatively power-hungry camera topped off isn't a huge deal. When it comes to features, the Lumix S1 has a laundry list, and chief among them is in-body 5-axis image stabilization, which, when combined with a compatible stabilized lens like this one, gives you up to six stops of correction for stable, handheld shooting and smooth video. And as with all Panasonic cameras, the system works very well, even with the full-frame format. Autofocus, on the other hand, is a point of contention with the Lumix S1. Now, Panasonic uses a contrast detect AF system called depth from defocus, which is both fast and very accurate. But in lower light particularly, continuous autofocus can be a bit off-putting for users as the DFD system quickly pulses back and forth to maintain proper focus. And it usually seems to nail the selected spot when the shutter is pressed, but the experience takes some getting used to. Now, face detection, eye detection, and subject tracking don't exhibit as much of this effect, and when shooting video, continuous autofocus is much smoother. One cool feature is the camera's high resolution mode, which is very handy for landscape photographers and for tightly controlled studio scenes. Now, since the camera has to shift the sensor over the course of multiple shots, a tripod is absolutely necessary, but the results are quite impressive if conditions are right. Using the 24 megapixel S1, you get a total of 96 megapixels, while the 47.3 megapixel S1R provides a ridiculous 187 megapixels in high-res mode. Now, landscape shooters also benefit from the camera's rugged design. It's weather-sealed to protect it from splashes, rain, and snow, and it can function in very low temperatures. The S1 also claims to be a high-quality video production machine. With 4K up to 60p, HDR video, and hybrid log gamma included, the S1 offers amazing video flexibility and quality right out of the box. And for serious professionals, a V-Log upgrade is available separately. But the S1 is a very capable performer without it. The S1R also provides excellent video quality, but with the super high-res sensor, this camera is geared more towards still photography, with a slight crop, no HLG, and no V-Log option. So for videographers, the S1 is definitely the better choice. So what else can be said about the Lumix S1? A lot, actually. This camera is extremely customizable, gives you tons of options for JPEG output, has 18 megapixel 6K photo mode for capturing those fleeting moments at 30 frames per second, or 8 megapixel 4K photo mode for 60 frames per second image capture. It has post focus, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and much more. And both cameras, the S1 and the S1R, have all these features. So, how do they differ? Well, let's start with the obvious 24 megapixels versus 47.3. Also, the S1 has a native ISO range up to 51,200, while the S1R's native range maxes out at 25,600. So the S1 is a little better in low light, but for maximum resolution and detail, the S1R stands out. 
the S1 does have more robust video capabilities with the less dense image sensor. So overall, it beats the S1R in both video features and video quality. And due to the higher resolution, the S1R does use a little bit more power, so battery life on the S1 is a bit longer. And apart from those few items, the only other major difference is the price. The S1 starts at $2,500, while the S1R launched at $3,700. So if you really need that extra resolution for extensive cropping or really big prints with loads of detail, maybe the S1R is right for you. But overall, the S1 is the more versatile and less expensive camera. In either case, these cameras are a very good start to a professional level system. And with the video focused 6K S1H coming later this year, Panasonic is definitely looking to take on the leaders in the mirrorless market. How will they fare? Only time will tell. And in the meantime, if you're interested in either the Panasonic Lumix S1 or the S1R, you can get yours as well as all the lenses you need, Panasonic or Sigma, at Cometa Camera in Amityville, New York, or at cometa.com.